Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayo de Ariwola, bows out of the bench. The Chief Justice must therefore not see himself as the Emperor of the Supreme Court. The occupier must work with his colleagues. Nigeria's First Lady, Oluremi Tinubu, flags of Renewed Hope Initiative's Economic Empowerment Program in Delta State. Economic empowerment remains a core objective of the Renewed Hope Initiative, and we have consistently delivered on this promise. The National Assembly commits to tackling gender-based violence in Nigeria through legislation. We must put in place institutions such as strategies to ensure compliance. And on Good Morning Nigeria today, our focus is on dealing with challenges of life. Well, about 10 states and the federal capital territory, Abuja, have either experienced various degrees of flooding or recorded casualties as rains intensified. Recently, the Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph Otsev, warned that 21 more states might suffer flooding. Well, a downpour grounded business and commercial activities some time ago in Lagos and Ogun states, which resulted in flooding that brought down a two-story building in the Mushi area of Lagos. Now, an incident that overwhelmed residents while pupils could not attend schools in parts of the state. Mm. You know, people was also swept away by the flooding in the K2 area of Lagos. Very sad report there. And mm. uh, of course, across the country, uh, the story is the same. Now, the annual flood outlook by the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency released in April had predicted that 148 local government areas in 31 states fell within the high flood risk areas. The affected states include Adamawa, Akwaibom, Anambra, Bochi, Bayelsa, Benue, Bornu, Cross River, Delta, Eboni, Edo, Imo, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, and Kebe. Well, that list also encompassed Kogi, Kwara, Lagos, Nasarawa, Niger, Ogun, Ondo, Oshun, Oyo, Plateau. Rivers, Sakoto, Taraba, and the other states. And so today on Good Morning Nigeria, we focus on an issue that is becoming uh, too familiar, uh, flooding. Every year we get to talk about it, uh, from the ravaging waters in Bayelsa to the submerged streets in Lagos. Nigeria is once again grappling with the devastating impact of flooding. Well, as the nation struggles to come to terms with the loss of lives, livelihoods, and infrastructure, we ask, what can be done to mitigate the effects of flooding? How can we adapt to the new reality of climate change and urbanization? So many questions. Uh, we hope to get the answers. Join us mm -hmm. as we examine uh, the challenges of flooding in Nigeria, from the root causes to the resilience of affected communities with our guests made up of experts in disaster management, urban planning and climate change. Well, that list of guests won't be complete without you, the viewer. Together, we will explore the human costs of flooding and the stories of survival. Now, the role of government, private sector and civil society in flood mitigation. Innovative solutions and technologies to adapt to flooding. The intersection of flooding with other critical issues such as poverty, health care and education. So let's navigate the complexities of Nigeria's flooding crisis and discover ways to build resilience, adapt to change and create a safer future for all. Welcome to the program. I am Victor as we are reaching you on the network service of the NTA. 
and i am ian ray john i joined victor to welcome you to the program and like victor said uh, we do sincerely appreciate the viewer you mm -hmm. know like to say the viewer is king uh, mm -hmm. and uh we're here to make sure you get the very best uh news of power review will come up in the course of this uh, uh program and that will be much later when chukudi okoli Ubaja would uh, join us uh but for now we have our colleague musa abubakar uh, with the morning news. Musa, good morning to you. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Vector. Here's the news. The sterling leadership qualities of an eminent jurist who is the immediate past chief of Nigeria, I mean, Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ola, Olukayo de Tajuddin Ariola, uh, resonated the valid datory uh, court session in honor of the retired head of the country's judiciary. The ceremonial hall of the Supreme Court uh, attracted who is who in the temple of justice uh, came to honor a juries whose uh, uh, tenure was full of imprint in the judiciary. Not at all. He is not. He's only the first among equals. Indeed, his lordship came, saw and conquered. He has made his mark and left indelible <coughs> imprints in the annals of the Nigerian judiciary and the legal profession in general. President Bola Tinibu congratulates uh, Justice Olukayo de Ariola as he retires as Chief Justice of Nigeria after a successful public service career. Justice Ariola served as Justice of the Court of Appeal in Kaduna, Inugu and Lagos Divisions before his elevation to the Supreme Court in 2011. He was sworn in as Chief Justice of Nigeria in 2022 and served the nation in diverse capacities as a judicial officer. President Tinubu commends the eminent jurors for his services to the nation, noting his impactful leadership of the judiciary and his efforts in enriching Nigerian jurisprudence as well as strengthening the fiber of the law. The president thanks Justice Ariola and wishes him the very best for the future. A statement by the presidential advisor on media and publicity, Juri Ngilale, indicates that President Tinubu will swear in Justice Ariola's successor at the State House Council Chambers today. Uh, president Bola Ahmed Tinubu has urged the Nigerian judiciary not to be deterred, but rather be resolute in actualizing its constitutional responsibilities. The president presented by, represented by the Vice President Kashim Shatima stated this at the public presentation of the book, Judging with Justice, the autobiography of Justice Olukayo de Ariola, the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria. as president of Nigeria, and happy to have witnessed some of these laudable achievements. I hope his successor in office will carry on the torch passed on by his lordship. This autobiography is more than just a recounting of events. About 37,000 women petty traders in Nigeria have received the sum of 50,000 naira each as business recapitalization grant. Courtesy of the Renewed Hope Initiative at a ceremony in Asaba to flag of the disbursement of 1,000 beneficiaries in Delta State. Nigeria's First Lady Oluremi Tinubu says the intervention is aimed at expanding the contributions of the informal sector to the national economy. 850 million naira will be disbursed to 37,000 women petty traders across the nation. Economic empowerment remains a core objective of the Renewed Hope Initiative, and we have consistently delivered on this promise. Now, the Deputy President of the Senate, Barrow Jibril, has expressed commitment of Nigeria's parliament to pass enabling laws that will address gender-based violence in the country. This was at a workshop in Abuja organized by Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians to garner support and parliamentary response towards combating gender-based violence as well as ensure gender justice in society. We must put in place institutions, structures, and strategies to ensure compliance 
and bring errant citizens, no matter how highly placed, to book, to serve as digital, to will be perpetrators. A report just reaching out says President Tinubu uh, returns after a private uh, uh, trip to France to sway in a new uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria. Now, those are the highlights of the news at this time. Good Morning Nigeria continues with Victor and Airy after the break. From the Atlantic across the savannah to the Sahara We rise, a land of the free, we know they're tired We drink great, our spirit is undying Resilient, rooted like palm tree We swear in colors, we turn dark in deeper We make solutions, we ignite passion, yeah It's a place we teach you me, we have more than the spirit I am the real Nigerian. Brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA. Come on, let's go. Darling natural twists blend with her hair over time. Yeah, that's perfect. She's really more beautiful every week. Darling natural twists get better every day, just like you. Relief is coming. More wages, reduced costs. Nigeria's national minimum wage is now 70,000 Naira, and it will be reviewed every three years. The federal government will commence immediate implementation, and state governments have been encouraged to follow suit. With the presidential CNG initiative, transport costs are coming down. Are you a car owner or a transporter? Visit www.pci.gov.ng to find out how you can benefit from switching to CNG. This is the renewed hope. You have to meet my best friend. She's the sweetest. Hey, check out my hair. Which one? The one on your head or the one in the sink? Relax. Next time... Just use the Mega Growth Anti Damage Relaxer. It's infused with wonder oils and conditioning proteins so you can retouch without breakage. Now your hair looks great. Thank you. Retouch without breakage with Mega Growth Anti Damage No Like Cream Relaxer. NTA Television College Jaws, with a pedigree of producing indelible professionals in the media space and an affiliate of the prestigious Hamadou Bello University, Zaria, for the award of degree in mass communication, calls on prospective candidates to leverage on the following courses it offers for 2024-2025 academic session. BSC Mass Communication, those with minimum admissible score of 180 and above who sat for the 2024 JAMB stroke UTME and direct entry, while 100 to 179 minimum admissible score can apply for the National Innovation Diploma NID in Film and Television Production, Broadcast Journalism and Television Engineering. For more inquiries, visit our website or call 0803-383-4343. Announcer, Registrar. Nigeria means a lot to me. And Nigeria means peaceful cohesion. My country. Yeah, we continue to pray and then hopefully we will come to understand that unity. Unity of purpose, unity of living together. Our ethnic beliefs and background and culture is our strength ever since the amalgamation period of uh, 1914 to date, about 109 years ago, the people of Nigeria live very peacefully with one another. I think diversity helps a lot to, uh, to enhance the uh, robust development in Nigeria. All over the country, you know, you have so many ethnic groups, over 250. That is enough to tell you that this is a blessed country. And, you know, uh, God has kept, you know, together as one individual entity.
The federal government of Nigeria warns vandals of national assets, electricity transmission towers, cables and other facilities to desist from this act of sabotage. Vandalism is a serious crime punishable under the law. Vandalizing electrical equipment will affect millions of Nigerians including your loved ones. Remember that national assets belong to all of us, hence the need to protect them. Report all cases of suspicious movement around electrical facilities to security agencies. When you see something, say something. This message is from the Federal Ministry of Information and National Orientation in collaboration with the National Counter-Terrorism Center, NCTC, Office of the National Security Advisor. All right, uh, it's a pleasure to know that you're still there on Good Morning Nigeria. Well, it's time for us to get into the papers just after this break. All right, we got Chukwudi Okoli Ogbaja with us this morning. Good to see you, sir. Same here, the feeling is mutual. Um, Victor, you want how to you it's good to see you. Yes, it's good to see. You. It's good to see me. Sometimes I suspect, I suspect <laughs> your seeming sincerity. How are you doing? I'm all right. Same here. <laughs> all right, let's uh, see what the papers have, and uh, we we'll begin with uh, the blueprint uh, first morning. Uh, looks like everyone uh, on this uh, set has a touch of blue. So let's uh, see what the blueprint has. Uh, the lead story here says uh, FG once again subversive acts. Lord Zariwola on retirement. Uh, the kicker to that uh, headline as police await a Jeru on alleged treason. The riders plans to change narratives in justice sector. Uh, Kikere Ekun steps in today as new CJN. Fantastic. Uh, good news there. And of course, uh, below that, uh, we have terrorist skill 13 in Niger. To Bu Mon slain Sokoto Monarch. Northern Coalition blasts Sokoto government. Police Lord Umba over kidnappers then. All of that on page seven. Uh, below that, we have on a green strip, not too good. Uh, Dangote refinery may face production delay and mid testing phase. That's on page 19. You want to find out the cause of the delay. Uh, page 19 will guide you on that. And we have uh, uh, this one here. We never invaded churches, according to the army. Uh, that's on page 6. Get a whole gist. And uh, on uh, page 9, you can read a police nab woman for allegedly using hot iron on teenager. Above the masthead, Kaduna is uh, the kicker. Chief of Army Staff orders investigation into alleged killing of three headers, 100 cattle. Uh, details of that on page seven and of course on business naira shows mixed performance against dollar amid market volatility uh, page 19 is uh, the page and finally from the blueprint joss community apprehends kidnapper over 1.5 million naira ransom on minors all right let's uh, move quickly now to the nigerian tribune Nigerian Tribune leads uh, with uh, Niger killings. Federal government orders security agencies to track foreign miners funding banditry. Uh, the riders bans mining in Shiruru site vows to avenge killing of 12 miners. Uh, this, uh, this long... Uh, all right, I think I'll skip that. Page 3 has all of that if you want to see that. Above the masthead, Oanda completes $783 million Nigerian Ajib Oil Company acquisition deal. As LNPC says, Oando, Wale Tinubu have no equity in OVH. All right, uh, more stories on that. And on page 7, ICPC once again undermining Supreme Court judgment on local government autonomy. Below the picture story, we have Ariwala bows out a CGN, signs up new Supreme Court rules. The riders, AGF cautions against subversion of democratic government, Tunubu to swear in Kikiri Ekum as CGN today. And just uh, beside the picture story, we have this one from the past sector, Minister Mall's differential tariffs to stimulate demands. Uh, the rider says, great connection, cheapest, most reliable. And below that, finally, Adelike issues directives on food inflation, fuel prices, people's welfare. All of that on page four. Victor. All right, let's quickly run you through the front page of the Leadership Friday. And it leads with this 
bold story, Northern elders fret over kidnap, killing of monarchs, condemn murder of Sarkin Gobir, situation worrisome, say Abbas, Governor Liu. North must find solution to insecurity now, Sheh Sani. And then, just below that is one tiny strip, National Hospital Plans World Class Healthcare Delivery. That story can be found on page 7. And above the nameplate, Chinese firm seizes another Nigerian jet in Canada. For details, go to page 9 of the leadership on Friday. And then this recurring story, Tinubu swears in Kekereku as CJN today. That story can be found on page 4. And then in that uh, tiny strip at the bottom of uh, the front page here, Nigeria's 9.2 trillion Naira 19-month petrol subsidy surpasses 8.15 trillion Naira spent in 16 years. I'll take that again. Nigeria's 9.2 trillion Naira 19-month petrol subsidy surpasses 8.15 trillion Naira spent in 16 years. You can find details of that story on page 11. Chukode. Please, let me quickly talk about the National Hospital plan to mm -hmm. give us world-class healthcare delivery. I was there two weeks ago with a patient. I had to become their PRO, so to speak. Mm. When one elderly PRO man... without pay. When one elderly man started complaining that he was de developing a second ailment just waiting in, in the long queue. Now, part of what they, we need to do to health care, sorry, th this is not exactly LP, my dear. We're talking health. What part of what we need to do is to arrest the brain drain, from what I saw. Arrest the brain drain, then the infrastructural I expansion you are planning would have human resources that would make it happen. But so that Nigerians that? stop uh, get, uh, being agonized over seeking relief to their frailties. You it's know. a question of how you arrest the brain drain. If the conditions um, don't seem right to an individual, that individual uh, reserves the right, you know, to seek. What did we? What? What, what did we do to, to, to the judges just a few day, uh, a few days ago? What did we do? And I I, 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 I was very much in support. That's of why it. I said if the conditions exactly. aren't right, let the conditions improve for healthcare across Nigeria. Leave national hospital out of it. That's an individual, you know, situation. It's about Nigerians' health. Abroad, health care is number one on the list when it comes to, you know. So it's very important. Now, we spoke about this uh, security situation, uh, you know, particularly involving the Sarkin. I think just uh, a day Sarkin ago. Oh, oh, yes. Maybe yesterday, perhaps, we spoke about it uh, yes. extensively, by the way. And now Northern yesterday. elders are really, you know, uh, agitated over it. Mm. Who would not be? It's not a, a northern monarch thing. It should be humanity really enraged over what is happening up north. Now, what is the story from Niger, um, not Niger, please, Niger State? Mm -hmm. 13 farmers killed. And there is the warning that some of the things happening could actually be the handiwork of people who want to drive away, uh, you know, natives from a particular part of the state so that mining can happen. Mm -hmm. Imagine, you are indirectly fueling Nigeria's hunger disposition, hunger situation, because you want to uh, make, make maximum benefit for your own pecuniary benefits, for your own good only. Well... Uh, unfortunately, on this particular front, I'm not sure if there's um, a known narrative, um, an official narrative to this. So, like you would always say, well, as journalists, we shouldn't speculate, right? No, we, we shouldn't speculate. Uh, but, um, <laughs> you know, certain things happen that really raise the eyebrows, you know. Indeed. It's really unfortunate. Happens. And then the recurring story, on, I think we read it uh, pretty much every daily we have here today, Tinobu swears in. Kekereku. Yeah, Kekereku is in there now. She, she will be the uh, second female CJN. I, I, I am happy. I am happy for her. I am happy for for the for the women folk. 
uh, just as I was happy for uh, Kamala Harris yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually, it was uh, early, this morning, early this morning. You know, this morning. ladies must have a rising profile in the world because they actually are good stabilizers if you give them the opportunity to compete fairly with their male counterparts. I, I, thought... I, 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 I am happy. And I'm happy the, uh, pre, uh, the federal government is making the job of judges, you know, sub, uh, judiciary workers, a, a lot easier by giving them a take-home pay that could actually take them home and go beyond that into a little comfort in the world. Indeed. Yes. All right, Indeed. just a quick update on the health uh, sector that you talked about. Uh, you talked about the brain drain. Now, there's this new policy that was signed by the president on the 14th of this month. Uh, that was last week, Monday. And, uh, you know, I listened to the Minister of Health uh, talked about... Um, uh, talk about the fact that uh, the, that policy is supposed to assist Nigeria get about uh, 12,400 doctors practicing outside the country back in the country. That's a good one. Uh, you know, and uh, just some days ago, I saw a report of uh, uh, Nigeria um, not, uh, you know, um, opening the portal or if it's a website or something uh, for the licenses of uh, nurses uh, to be verified by um, other countries. Uh, you know, that way, you know, I mean, it's, it will probably... Uh, you know, make people stay, and uh, we hope that if that policy takes effect, yes. and um, all the plans that the Minister of Health, you know, actually talked about at the at the signing of that uh, policy, we hope that you know we'll get our doctors uh, back, so, some back, and then those who are here would not want to exactly. leave. Exactly, uh, it's actually a little short you know. of declaring a state of emergency. On, uh, on health, on, you know. on health, yeah, very it's a very serious uh, situation, serious. and then the fact that those who are even around at the moment are, um, are falling ill as a result of um, you know the, the kind of work that they have to do. Actually, I'm tired of saying this. I was told, uh, stop complaining. There are two sets of people here: those who are on the verge of leaving and those who are pursuing their papers. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I got deflated. You understand? So we need to do exactly what you have recommended for our own sake. All right. I hope. That, I, I hope. I hope that that works, and I hope that the health sector will get better. Um, it will. You know what they say. To health. Which I want is to be able. Health is wealth. So if if, if the health country if the country is sick, of course, <laughs> how can we be talking about wealth? Yes. And then for the women, congratulations to them. Yes. Uh, we hope that they do great and make us proud. Uh, you know, just uh, so that the men, uh, you know, would know that uh, women are equal to the task and capable of leading whatever position they find themselves it's not a man versus women thing i didn't say it was a men versus women thing i'm just <laughs> trying to say that when a woman doesn't do great Victor, when, when a woman doesn't do great the Victor, the, the loudspeaker is louder Victor, I, I was almost <laughs> going to say that yeah hasn't commented Victor, on this uh, kamala harris issue. kamala harris said <laughs> this morning that her mother told her that some people don't have some opportunities so she says she's, she wants to bring an opportunity economy I, 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 into the U.S. Women in Nigeria, women in Africa, do not compete on the same platform with men. Thank you, sir. I have to say it, but I'm not a woman about. But I can give you several instances where women have the edge because they get um, this man is a they native. They get it a bit easier mm -hmm. just because oh, it's a woman. Let's What's the percentage? So? What, no, no, no. What instances? Would always what have what instances? A journalist would always Proof. have inst uh, 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 you know answers for you. What is the percentage of the people you just talked about? Well, we have to be scientific and uh, until we get the data, maybe the NBS will help us. In and general. then until you get the data, well, you keep that uh, theory of yours. This is Good Morning Nigeria <laughs> of the Network Service of the NTA. We'll see you after the break where our conversation proper begins. Imagine a world where your potential isn't limited by your bank account, where your financial dreams can become reality. That world is here with the Nigerian Consumer Credit Corporation Scheme, Credicor. Credicor is one of President Tinubu's initiatives designed to put the power of consumer credit in the hands of working Nigerians. Here to help you achieve your goals, whether it's providing for your family or expanding your home or business. Visit www.credicor.ng today for details. This is the renewed hope you have to meet my best friend she's the sweetest hey check out my hair which one the one on your head or the one in the sink relax next time just use the mega growth anti damage relaxer it's infused with wonder oils and conditioning proteins so you can retouch without breakage 
Now your hair looks great. Thank you. Retouch without breakage with Mega Growth Anti Damage No Like Cream Relaxer. Let me give you this right. Okay. So I post that one, she no agree. I post that too, she no agree. And I say, come where there's money, big dreams, so she's coming. I did my research and I saw that it was fun. Saw that it was vibes, there was money to be won. Then I said, yeah, put my name on the form. Then it did just that and what was done was done. He has been releasing albums for us back to back, but he, he has he didn't blow. Hopefully, <laughs> we are expecting that it will blow very soon. As the rap, no rap, I had to wrap it up. So come up to man a fuel. If we win this field, it will help with the fuel. Mm -hmm. The show host too sweet. I give her dice to roll, she roll two six. Yeah. Oh, you're waiting be your name. Peace or love. Hey! Karina! Yes, Pisola. In a relationship? No. I like when people are firm. They know what they're saying. Yeah. They don't dodge the asses. No. They don't roll their eyes and go, nah. I'm a seasoned international alaga. Yes. Mm. Alaga is seasoned international. For engagement. Trust me, I'm there. Hmm. And the action is there. Mention the reason people avoid relationships. <laughs> Commitment issues. That's what you are suffering from, Abby. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> she says commitment issues. <laughs> Survey says A new edition of TV Guide is out This time we got up close and personal with the transformational legislator The Deputy President of the Senate Distinguished Senator Barrow Debrin It created a difference in terms of representation uh, Through uh, interventions that are brought uh, unprecedented infrastructure development to my area. This edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from technology, entertainment, economy, media, politics, family and lots more. It is indeed a park of excitement as we take you through every aspect of life. Pick up your copy and get abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive. Very educative and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. This season, enjoy all the better moments with Go TV. Your football party, Go TV. They give you better deal of Decoder Plus Go Tena for only 19,900 naira. Make you enjoy correct football action live on Top Super Sport. Go TV, love it. You have to move from the point where you protect and defend your religion to a point where you also recognize the rights of the other person, of the other religion, and protect it. So if I am protecting my own territory and my own people and trying to emphasize their rights and protect their rights, I should also be thinking about how to protect the rights of the others. Both Islam and Christianity recognize and defer to God and both recognize the temporariness of the life of this world and that ultimately, we all go back to God for the day of reckoning when everybody will render an account of his life on this temporary abode. Alright, uh, welcome back. It's still good morning, Nigeria, live on the network service of the NTA. And uh, to kickstart our conversation, let's uh, see this uh, background report on uh, dealing with the challenges of flood uh, put together by our correspondent, uh, Ibrahim Dan Hamidou. Ten states in Nigeria are already experiencing flooding, with people being affected also. But what is causing these floods? Heavy rainfall, poor drainage systems, and climate change are all playing a role. Nigeria's geography also makes it prone to flooding. Over 100,000 people have been displaced, and many more are affected. Relief camps are providing shelter, food, and medical care, but it is a big challenge. The economic impact is also significant. 
farmlands have been submerged and destroyed. Crops have been washed away and infrastructure damaged. Estimated losses are in the billions of Naira. The government has deployed emergency response, provided relief materials and set up a flood relief fund. But key players say more needs to be done to address the root causes of flooding and support affected communities. So what is next? Join us as our guests discuss the urgent need for a comprehensive flood management plan in Nigeria. They will share insights on how to mitigate the devastating impact of flooding and explore a multifaceted approach to reduce risks, support affected communities, and build resilience for the future. Ibrahim Hamidu, thank you very much for that uh, report. Now let's begin the conversation by introducing first here in the studio, Pastor Femi Bejide, Director of Operational Hydrology, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, NISA. It's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Good morning, Nigeria. All right. I've also been joined here in the studio by Idris Abubakar Mohammed, Special Assistant to the Director General, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. Thank you for joining us on Good Morning, Nigeria. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigeria. All right. Uh, still uh, joining us uh, for the uh, conversation we have with us, uh, Dr. Nura Ibrahim, the Commissioner for Environment, uh, Jigawa State. Many thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure having me around this time. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for being our guests this morning. Let me begin with uh, Pastor Bejide. Why does it seem that uh, the Nigerian flooding um, crisis won't go away? Every year we must talk about flooding and indeed talk about casualties, the victims, or whatever you want to call it. What do we need? To do to address it permanently. Thank you very much. The issue of flooding, number one, what I will say is about perspective. Uh, perspective in the sense that um, people see flooding as uh, something that is bad and evil. But uh, when I say flooding is a, is a good natural disaster, in the sense that um, there are so much benefits we can derive from flooding if it's properly, you know, uh, mitigated. What is flooding? Flooding is just excess water. Excess water. So there are things that ne are needed to be done. And if it's put in place, like uh, channelization, we, we have so many, Nigeria have a vast uh, land mass. We can channel this excess water, you know, to maybe we put it in a dam. A reservoir or like a canal to our vast irrigation lands in Nigeria to for irrigation purposes so the purpose and uh, the flooding in Nigeria we cannot stop flooding because God is the one that brought flooding at first and uh, it's just excess water so what we need to do is to manage that water how to manage it and there are various ways to manage it which i believe in the course of the discussion we will be talking about that but as a starter we have to know also that netherlands is just about two degrees below mean sea level i mean already naturally submerged so beneath why lagos here in, in nigeria is two degrees above mean sea level and yes there is equilibrium stability hydraulic equilibrium eh, in netherlands they created land, sand fill it, the whole nation, and canals all over to be able to drain the water and channel it for use. So flooding, we cannot stop it because we talk about precipitation, water coming down from, we can't stop it, we can't hold it, but how do you manage it? How do you correct Take it? How do you, of it? Yes, that is what we are going to talk about. But to stop it, we can't stop it. We can't stop rain from falling. We need the rain. All right. Uh, but, you know, if you can manage the rain or manage the water that falls, uh, then you will not necessarily have flooding. Yes. Uh, right. So, of course, that term, you know, when 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 place is flooded or overtaken by water may not necessarily, you know, become uh, the issue when you manage it effectively. Exactly. So when there are channels for the water to go through and all of that. <coughs> but like you said, we'll get into all of that in the conversation. Uh, let's uh, 
uh, get to Idris Abubakar Mohammed, Special Assistant to the Director General, National Emergency Management Agency. I'd like you to give us uh, 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 the true picture of uh, things at the moment, uh, the states that have been affected by uh, flood this year, and what has been the impact so far. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, just like uh, Alagide said, uh, flood is a natural phenomenon. Uh, it's only when you have uh, floods in nexus with human habitation, it becomes a disaster. And uh, for us, mercifully here in Nigeria, the two agencies that are involved in, the, in climate prediction, the NISA and the NIMED, uh, before the onset of the rainy season, they give us these predictions. So it's like we know that uh, floods is going to happen. And the predictions are becoming more accurate and more credible thanks to technology over time. Uh, having received these uh, predictions, NEMA has uh, downscaled the disaster implications of these uh, predictions to every state of the Federation. As of today, uh, NEMA has uh, activated a, a National Emergency Operations Center, an EOC, at the agency's headquarters. Uh, during the brief uh, uh, documentary, I heard that about uh, 10 states are experiencing floods. But uh, by the dashboard, 28 states of Nigeria are already affected by floods. 113 local governments are affected. 429,350 persons are affected by flood. As of yesterday, the closing time, I got this information at the dashboard. It might have changed as we are speaking. 167,481 persons are displaced. 65,762 households are affected. Unfortunately, sadly, 138 lives are lost. Thousands of hectares of uh, farmlands have been inundated by, 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 by floods. And uh, I'm happy that uh, here we have uh, the Commissioner of uh, Environment for Jigawa State. Most of these issues of floodings are human induced. Like uh, we always say, if we fail to take good care of our environment, we make sure that uh, our drainages are not blocked, make sure that uh, our urban and regional planning authorities do not uh, allocate plots of land on floodplains locations, grant them building permits. We allow free flow of water. This fresh water that uh, has become a disaster in Nigeria is one of the most valuable resources in the world. Nations of the world have gone to war because of fresh water. Uh, the Chinese, they diverted uh, the river Yangs. They resettled more than 300 million populations because they want the arid locations of the country to have water. Here in Nigeria, we're always talking about uh, the inter-basin water transfer from the Congo Basin to the Chad Basin, so that Lake Chad can be recharged. But here we are every year, we have multitudes of floods and uh, causing havoc, leading to loss of lives, livelihoods, and uh, and, and, and damage to infrastructure. I think as the conversation continues, we, we, we look at some of these processes, what we have done, where are we, and of course the way forward. That's my take for now. Now, I, I, I would have, uh, anyway, I, I'll come to you so that we know what the situation is in Jiga, but at the moment, every year, we talk about this. We still have people who come, maybe not you, maybe somebody else, yes. will come and say, if only we can do this. Next year we come again, we say if only we can do this. What is stopping us from doing those things we need to do to put an end to this? 
uh, we have we have people are uh, state governments Nema are doing a lot. I'll give an example of Abuja here, FCT, where we are. That this uh, local Goma area where the floods have been devastating every year, but uh, because of the proactive measures put by the FCT administration, I know a lot of houses were houses that were built on floodplains were removed. Shanties were removed in several parts of the FCT. Jigawa State, I'm happy the commissioner is here. Coincidentally, I'm from Jigawa State. Mm. Jigawa State is one of the very proactive states. I know they have desilted the rivers. It could have been worse than what we are, we are, we are observing now. You see, Jigawa State is sitting on a wetland. That wetland extends down to Lake Chad. And uh, I recall that not only in Jigawa, in several states of Nigeria, dry season farming is happening. A lot of farming because of uh, uh, these programs that government has put in place to safeguard our national food security. So the side effect is that the soil is already saturated because of these irrigation waters. So when the rain starts falling, the water runs off instead of sinking into the soil. I think uh, the commissioner is in a better position. So are you position. saying dry season farming is, uh, has negative in, uh, impact? Whatever you do, that inadvertently, you, you, you create certain complexities that, that, that you have to look into and, and make amends. All right. Uh, let's uh, get to Dr. Nora Ibrahim. Of course, a lot of people would say we want the dry season farming. Looking at uh, you know, the present realities, we want food and we also do not want flood. So but I want you to tell us what's the situation like in Jigawa State and uh, you know, tell us in details what Jigawa State has uh, been able to do, the Jigawa State government has been able to do to reduce the impact of flood in this year. Uh, I think let me start by commending and, and appreciating the federal government through NEMA. Uh, Nimeth, NISA also, because they all send these uh, predictions to us so that we can prepare against most likely what we are going to encounter as far as flooding issue is concerned. So looking at that, we looked at it. The state came up with the Flood State Preparedness Committee that got across MDEs that are responsible for managing flooding. As rightly said by my uh, friends and colleagues, the pastor and Idris, you know, flooding, you just have to mitigate and then employ uh, adaptation measures for you to get across. So looking at that, we formed that committee. We looked at our flood prone areas. We look at Areas that usually experience maybe flooding, not even as a result of the uh, river flooding. Because Jiga, we have two things. He rightly said, uh, Jiga is sitting on a uh, wetland, and not only wetland, but flat land, mind you. We don't have gradient. So this is a big issue. We don't have gradient. So looking at that, the governor ensured that the state acquired these uh, huge amphibious excavators for draining the river, for the Sultan, as he rightly said. And also, the state formed a technical flood committee for over one year in collaboration with the Hadeja uh, Jama'ari River Basin Development. The MD of Hadeja Jama'ari River Basin is the chair, I am the co chair, and then with various uh, expert engineers and a lot of uh, uh, role within. So that uh, we sit virtually <coughs> once every month, and maybe we can call for any emergency sitting, if need be. So this uh, flood committee is always monitoring the river system, trying and see what we can do different, sending warning signs, if there are any warning signs, for example, if there are any maybe possible discharges, because we have two major dams, Tiga and uh, uh, this Bagoda dam. And also have Chala Goji in all in Kano State, mind you. Because what usually happens during the, uh, when you have river rain flooding is that you have discharges from these dams that increase the water level. And he's rightly mentioned, uh, uh, Mr. Idris, that most of these are man made because of the cost for people to farm, 
to irrigate their farmland. From the entry point of River Hadija, that's a Ringim local government, a location called Debi, to Zorio in Guri local government, where it exits, it entered into Yobi. We have, when we counted, I think um, by l uh, last month, we have more than 400 illegal river bank breakages just for to allow water reach their farmland. So what happened is that whenever you get increase in discharge from these dams or excessive runoffs from rain, those breakages, the water will go through those and flood the farmland, mm. you know, overtake the uh, communities and what have you. That resulted in loss of farmland, uh, loss of uh, lives, properties, infrastructure and other things. So what the state is doing at that level is that we are now sensitizing the communities. We have gone for adv advocacy to all the five areas in Jigawa State, namely Hadeja, Gumel, Kazori, Ringim and Duse. So that they we so that they can call people to order, so that they don't continue illegally breaking these uh, river banks because it's one of the major factors, one of the major man-made factors. One, as we said, for irrigation purpose, and second for fishing. What they do is that they will break and they excavate land. Water will flood the area, and after the water has uh, uh, rescinded, then they will just go and pick the fish. Have the fish. Mm. You have not done anything. All you need is just excavate. And you, 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 you realize a villager will go and have best 5 million, 6 million uh, uh, naira worth of fish in a year. So it becomes very, very difficult for us. And that's why now the state government is looking at coming, up, coming out with legislation that will regulate all these man-made activities along the river banks so that we'll be able at least to address this issue of uh, uh, river flooding. As he rightly said, this year, because we've done a, a, a great deal of work along that uh, river, but as for now, we have desilted more than 120 kilometers along the river Hadeja, and we are continuing. This state, uh, this year, the state is again acquiring two more amphibious ex excavators. So we have four at present, Two from the state, two from Hadeja Jamari. We are buying another two very soon. I think by next month they will arrive. We imported another two. Then we want to have as many as like six to ten. So that we don't have issue of this um, uh, desilting, so that a river over as a natural phenomenon. As I said, Jiga is on a flat land. When the water comes, as the water is moving, it will be dropping the sediments. So before you know it, it's, uh, it's, it's already silted and the water will flow its banks. The river will flow it, uh, overflow its banks. Great, great. So, great. Dr. Ibrahim, yeah. thank you very much for your opening remarks. I'm sure we'll get back to you uh, yes. to tap into more of uh, what Jigawa is doing. But let me get back to uh, Pastor Bejide here. I, I don't know what uh, you know, the current flood mitigation measures are, but clearly from you know, knowing that every year we still have to talk about this, it means that uh, something is not quite right. So, from where you stand, or maybe at the current, uh, at the present <laughs> seat, maybe you could tell us what are those uh, new strategies that we can um, explore. Yes, I'm just uh, so happy for Jigawa because uh, one of our major problem over the years we have been saying is that the governors, the states are not responding properly. But today you have heard uh, what Jigawa and state they are doing. I think Jigawa, legal state, and uh, maybe rivers now, they, if other states can be doing such also, it's great. But at this uh, point, I have to just make some demarcations so that we understand this scenario of flood is multi sectoral. As an agency, I'm happy we have three people here. Nicer, we predict a forecast of this is how the flood will look like this year. Then from there, after the flooding, we, next we have the, uh, the governors, the state governors. 
their own because we send all these uh, forecasts to them, to all states of the Federation as our duty. Now they now have to now work on it. Then send to NEMA. NEMA also now use it to prepare their own, you know, uh, response to such things. So that's the, the link together. But for NISA specifically, there are five major things we do. Five major things. And uh, as our, by statutory, we have this mandate and uh, we call it the NISA way. At what do I mean by NISA? I mean N I H S A. That's our acronym, Nigeria Ideological Services Agency. And by that also, we carry out our function in a nicer way. That means N I H S A. What is the N for? I mean, notation of flood prone areas nationwide. And we do that by our annual flood outlook that we call AFO. Every state. I'm happy that uh, the Honorable Commissioner also attests to that. We send it out maybe around February. Mm. NEMA also, they are also, we are stakeholders. We work together hand in hand. So that is the first thing. So it gives you an outlook of how the flood will be this year. Like, for example, this year we have, we have predicted already that by the time where we are in July to September, 135 local government areas will be flooded and uh, with highly flooded areas. Then 121 local government moderately flooded. The prediction, the forecast is out already since February, March. Every year we do that. That is notation of flood areas. Then the I is what instrumentation. We have monitoring wells all over the country. Not as much as we're supposed to have because of the positive, uh, positive funds, but in major areas. We have two major areas coming into Nigeria, River Niger and River Benue. At the entrance into the country, River Benue from Cameroon, we have a monitoring station there, telemetric and also what staff gauge. And also River uh, Niger coming up. River Niger, by the way, is a transboundary river. It cut across about uh, 13 countries before entry into Nigeria. Nigeria is the last port. Everything coming from those uh, uh, 13 countries end up in Nigeria. From Cameroon also, all the water coming up from there end up in Nigeria. So that's why Nigeria as a whole, as a country, is a receiver. So that's why the issue of flood, we have to take it seriously and try to mitigate it. So that's why we do instrumentation. We have our instruments and monitoring station all over. Then the age, we have an LD partnership and collaboration, like we are having here now. NEMA, perfect collaboration. NIMET, the same. State governors, the same. Then the S, sensitization. We have zonal offices all over also the country, eight zonal offices. So the, from the headquarters in Abuja and our zonal offices, we go on sensitization. And finally, the A is alerts. So, and this alert, we do it in two ways, maybe issue a red alert and then flood alert. Yesterday, the DG, architect uh, Umar Ibrahim Mohamed, issued an alert on, uh, to the nation that there is um, probably flooding is coming because the water coming from River Ninja is already in, uh, in Niger. And they have told us. So we have reached an alert to uh, Kanji Dam and all the dam operators to release their water so that to be able to receive the water coming. So these are ways NISA is working. And if other sectors also do their own, like Jigawana and other states, I believe will not have flooding. flooding will not be an, a, a major disaster issue. Okay, uh, Pastor Benjede, you talked about Nigeria being a receiver, but we know that water can't be static. So when we receive, what happens? Yes, also the, all these waters, either by precipitation or to, from the rivers, they end up in the ocean. As far as Nigeria is concerned, Atlantic Ocean. So they go down. The two rivers meet at Lokoja, of course we know, and goes down to the creeks. By Yelsa, rivers, delta, and from there end up in what in the ocean. So that's why this flooding is more devastating. 
in a river state, Bayesa, say, boy, all those areas, and break into the creeks and enter into the ocean. But if, and it will interest you that the volume of water that we are receiving, either through the river and by precipitation as rain, eh, about 80% of it is being lost into the ocean. With, and also we're devastating the effect again. But what we are saying that if it's properly channeled and used, instead of losing that water, it will have used it for when many other things. When you talk about properly things. channeled and used, Yes, what, what I mean by that is that this water is needed. The 19 states of the northern state of the Nigeria now, we are talking about droughts. Because Nigeria, again, let me let you know, we, we are in the middle of two natural, you know, ecological disaster. One, from the northern part, we have the desertification coming, pressing. And again, we have this ocean surge again, pressing from the southern part. Mm. So, you, so you can understand the position of Nigeria very well. So we have to be dealing with desertification. We also have to do, uh, be dealing with ocean, uh, ocean surge and also saltwater intrusion. Because people in Bayesa State, River State, and everything, Bonyodo State, uh, they borrowed everything is salted because from the ocean. So all these things uh, we are dealing with. So that's the position of Nigeria. We are receiving the basin from all the waters and again pressing from the north uh, encroachments and from the south also pressing at the ocean. So if people understand this, the position of Nigeria like this, then all this water, channelization, dam, Every year we talk about Lag, uh, Lagdo Dam in Cameroon being released, f causing flood. And yes, we should have built a buffer dam. And from what I know, I learned that almost about 33 years ago, 35 years ago, that dam will have been proposed. Hmm. But up to now, has it has been not been built. built. It has been a very good, we call it buffer dam, to receive the water. So is it a case of Nigeria knowing the solution to this problem and just refusing to do it? Yeah, well, I would say, uh, again, everything also boils down to economic state of a nation and things like that to be able to have enough money to do this. But I think the present government is also now addressing that now. You know, that, that brings me to um, uh, the NEMA representative, uh, Idris Abubakar Mohammed. It looks like whenever we prepare for flood, we prepare for uh, response of NEMA. So we know that there's going to be a disaster. Instead of having to deal with the issue so we don't have a disaster, we prepare for disaster instead. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'd like you to give us a statistics of, you know, what Nigeria has spent so far in having to manage the disaster as a result of flood in the past years. Because uh, from what uh, Dr. Pastor Benjede has said, uh, I'm thinking that, you know, if all of that money was channeled into building a dam, we would not be dealing with a disaster, which also costs money and is costing lives. What's your take on that? Um, thank you very much. Every time we are discussing floods, like the pastor has said, I record the lamentations of the ancient, ancient marina. Water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. Water is a valuable resource. Uh, on your question, the disaster management architecture for Nigeria is structured in line with the federal political setting of Nigeria. The Lord has set up NEMA, also made provision for state emergency management agencies at the state level, local emergency management committees. So, so, so disaster management is, is, is cross-cutting, is all-inclusive. States, local government, the federal government, everybody must, 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 must do his bits. We are just uh, praising Jigawa State. So there are certain things that are structural, just like uh, clearing the drainage basins, I mean the, the, the drains, uh, desilting the rivers. Most of our rivers and, uh, and, uh, and the dam reservoirs are heavily silted. They are built some 30, 40 years ago. I recall the first dam built in, earth dam built in Nigeria was in Kano State, the burning Kudu Dam, where, where I attended my secondary school. Uh, we have the Kainji Dam, we have the Tiga Dam, we have a lot of dams, you know, as part of our, our agricultural revolution uh, over the years. But most of these dams are heavily silted. They are full of water. 
uh, uh, sand, so to say. So as the rain comes in, rains will always happen. Every year rain will fall, definitely. But uh, you see, over the years, population of Nigeria, early independence period was about 40 million. Now we are more than 200 million. So people must build houses. Infrastructure is expanding. People must farm so that we can feed the population. So a lot of human activities, which are definitely going to impact on the environment. I asked an, en an engineer during our humanitarian coordination forum one time uh, from the Ministry of Agriculture. And he told me that uh, the silting a dam, the, the reservoir of a dam, because the dam is a structure, then the body of water is a reservoir. The silting a reservoir is as costly as building a new dam and a reservoir. So these are capital intensive things. But that notwithstanding, states, local governments, NEMA, we are doing a lot with various degrees of successes. States have different capacities. States like Jigawa, like Lagos State, they are doing so much. FCT here, they are doing so much to mitigate uh, these uh, impacts of, of, of flooding. But uh, <coughs> like we always say, floods will always happen. It's only when you have a nexus with human habitation that it, it becomes a disaster. The rain recharge our underground water systems. Uh, 2018, I was in Patigi in, 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 in Kwara State. Then we went for an assessment uh, because half of the community was inundated. Then we met a fishmonger by the river banks, the river Niger. Left hand side is Kwara State, right hand side is Niger State. And he said, oh, we love the floods. Anytime the water recedes, we catch a lot of fishes. Just like the commissioner said, people impound water and the, during the dry season, a lot of fishes. And as the water is receding, they are planting. They are planting their crops. So even without irrigation, you see a lot of tomatoes, onions, mention them. They are from that soil moisture. So the flood itself is not all doom and gloom, of course. But for lives to be lost, it's, it's, it's definitely it's, it's, it's disheartening. And, uh, and uh, we have to rejig our processes of uh, mitigating these uh, floods. All so right. that we safeguard our, 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 our national Thank support. you, Idris Mohammed. Thank you very much for those comments. Um, we are trying to find a solution. And uh, one wonders, yes, you know, those in the studio, others in the studio are saying that Jigawa is doing something right this year. I'm just wondering, when NISA, or even NEMA for that matter, engages states, what is it that, you know, you discuss that Jigawa is probably doing that others are not doing, which is why we still have, you know, the level of flooding that we have. Because if every state complies with, um, you know, the technical guidelines that they are given, perhaps, you know, we'll have it, um, you know, mitigated to an extent. Yeah. I cannot really speak for other states. Uh, it's quite difficult. But when you are yeah, yeah, when yeah. For other states, I understand, but I can't speak for my state. I think it largely depends on the, I think um, uh, how responsive the government is. Mm -hmm. Maybe how the government is prioritizing issues. Because at present, uh, when the the present governor came in, he decided now. I think from next month we'll start having what we call sector meeting because he prioritized environment, looking at climate change as a very, very uh, issue that concerns the globe. So he feel that we need to be discussing monthly so that we can have better ways of addressing issues of climate change looking at both extremes. As the uh, pastor said, look and look, looking at maybe um, drought, desertification, looking at the flooding on the other side, looking at the li livelihood lost, mm -hmm. if look at, looking at the insecurity attached to the climate change issue because people need to migrate. You know, if, if you, are, you are, maybe you are, you are in a habitat, that it does no longer support, support food production, you have to move. 
and that's what is even causing all this uh, issue of farmers and herdsmen, because there is no now no grasses for the animals to feed, so they have to move southwards. So all these are issues that we need to look at holistically. As I said earlier, it all depends on the government, is state government specific. Some look at uh, maybe environment, climate change, not really as an issue. You know, some will focus more on health, education, agriculture, forgetting that, you know, environment is all encompassing because you have to have at least a very good prevailing environment for all these things to happen. Because we are talking about sustainable land management, we are talking about you know, extension services, we are talking about even the land to cultivate. When you have flooding, as he rightly said, if you don't reclaim the land, if the water do not recede, what do you do? You can virtually do nothing. So all these are efforts that you need to do. For, for, don't forget about the issues of land degradation, on the other hand, be it from uh, erosion, be it uh, from desertification, be it from many other sources. How do you reclaim this land? How do you uh, make use of this land so that they, this land becomes productive? Not a bad omen to the people. So, uh, as you rightly said, and that is the reason why, when His Excellency came in, the new governor, Malan Umar al he ensured that he look at things holistically. He's not forgetting other sectors, quite okay, we're doing great in other sectors, health and other sectors, but environment, he feel that this time around, we have to have a change, a paradigm shift. Let me say this. Initially, even as a commissioner, when, when they are uh, allocating portfolios, when they send you the environment, they will just put, ah, oh. you know, you know, it's a, you know it's, it's a place that nobody look, look, look at. Because uh, what is an environment? You know? Is it not tree planting? That's all people think about. Environment is just about trees and nothing. Maybe at, at most, as he rightly said, maybe the silting of the culvert and stuff like that, and then environmental, monthly environmental sanitation and things, and that's all. But they don't know environment has gone beyond that. It's a multifaceted uh, uh, discipline that you know deals with a lot of things. In fact, as we're talking about now, what the governor is looking at is trying to see how we can, you know, continue build capacity in that sector and again employ more hands. Because uh, when, we, when we give him the statistics, he probably, when I came in, there was no even a unit, not talk of the Department of Climate Change, in spite of its importance and that we have to create. You know, we have to, you know, you know build this uh, the capacity of the people. People have to understand that this is where the world is going and this is what is happening. So that's why I said it's usually uh, state specific. And if I can, maybe I'm sure Neymar and Naisa, they are doing that. I think the Governor's uh, Forum is a very, very important platform to discuss or to bring this conversation. Because they are all there, they meet regularly. So anything that maybe needs the attention of the governors will be taken there. And they will have a kind of uh, uh, tracking device where they will be showing the governor, this is how you are doing. This is how your state is doing as far as uh, flood is concerned. So I, 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 no right. governor would want a situation where, uh, where any time that it's meeting, he will be told that as far as uh, uh, flood mitigation adoption, uh, ad uh, adaptation measures are concerned, you are lagging behind. Mm. Thank I you. think these are issues that we need to look at. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Ibrahim, uh, for that point. Uh, very important. Uh, we hope that you know we can be able to nicer can take advantage of that yes. platform. Uh, but let, let's get to uh, Pastor uh, Femi Bejidi now. When you spoke earlier, you talked about the fact that Netherlands is uh, above water, no, two, below below water two rather, degrees. and then Lagos is two degrees above water. Yeah. But there's a prediction that uh, Lagos is likely going to be submerged. Uh, some years, in some years from now. Tell us, what are we doing wrong? Because if Netherlands that is below water is not being submerged and Lagos that is above, 
there's uh, the risk of being submerged. And then looking at the impact of flood at the moment in that state, you want to ask, you know, what, what, what is being done wrong, uh, wrongly? And how can we correct all of that? Yes, everything, like I said, and uh, the other discussants also have said, is holistic. Understanding first of what the issue is, like Jigawa State again, there is this proactiveness. If every governor and every state is working like that, this sector is very, very important. Flood every year, every year. Then there must be something to be done. Of course, we know what to do. Eh? And we have outlined it every time. And some states, like I said, are taking lead. And we have an example on, in the studio today to say it. Now, the issue also, we have said it a little bit, is the attitude of the people, perception of the people. Okay, lives is one of the major things. If properties are lost, okay, maybe we can get other properties a little bit for them. But life is lost, we can buy life back. But how can we reduce this? It becomes a great challenge in Nigeria because of attitude. So, okay, this is flood plain. Like in the, in the last time I was at a federal radio and they are asking that what is the sensitization level even in Abuja FCT, trade more. I say, what do you want us to do more for trade more that have not been done? I say sensitization. There are this natural sensitization by experience. This place was flooded five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, last year. It will be flooded again this year. You know that. You don't even need somebody to tell you. You know that area will be. So what are you doing about it? In Trademore, for example, in Abuja, what they do that the people there, they, they move maybe to other places and their friends and things like that. And uh, after it, they come back again. Why can't they demolish once and for all that place? And uh, this is just FCT here, where we are. So these are the kind of political will to do some things. We are here in FCT some years ago. Everybody is talking, Air Rufai, Air Rufai. There are ministers before Air Rufai. The law Air Rufai was employed was there already before, not when it came. Eh? And he tried to correct some of these things on the floor plane, all these illegal structures, remove it. Everybody was shouting and things like that. So these are the challenges. Now this is the floor plane, move away. They are already, they say this is our traditional land. This is our place, our livelihood, we got it from here. So they don't want to move. And why? Because of the gains. And we have had it here. What are the gains? When this uh, excess water comes, it brings, it refreshes the land and brings some nutrients. And again, above all, when it receded, eh, there are fishes and everything. I mean, no much work, just, you know, like Jigawa, they have said now, up to some of a farm, maybe six million worth. You're a millionaire? Uh, uh, why? Let no, the but, water but for Jigawa, he's saying that that's a challenge and they're that's trying what to I'm, stop that practice. Yes, but I'm saying that that's the mentality of the people. That's why they don't want to move. For, for, so for a place like Lagos, what do you think the main uh, and, problem And Lagos also, and like Lagos State, they are trying, to, and I mean, they're trying their best, drainages and everything like that. What, like we say, this uh, ocean surge, and then, yeah, of course, you have heard about all this lucky area about 20 years ago, where the ocean coast, but the landfills, everything. When you are landfilling, you are selling the land exorbitantly, People are building choice houses and they got no problem. But you know that originally, naturally, that's not a land. So are you saying so land filling is wrong as a practice? It depends upon the area. Like in, in, in a maybe what we call swampy area, uh, if you land fill that place, okay, it's no problem. But ocean line, uh, you, have, you are driving the ocean, you are, uh, uh, one day it is going to come back and it, you wash away all those places. We are seeing even right now, we see the southern part of Asia, a lot of things are happening there. Eh? Flood, you know, washing a whole city and everything, thousands of lives have been lost. It's, it's, it's not happening in Nigeria. Eh? Just few lives a little bit. But if you watch what is happening eh, in decades ago and now, Nigeria as a country, in regard to flood, and eh, lives are reducing, actually. Properties also, are reducing. Nema doing a great job and things like that. 
but the rate is low. But these are the challenges I'm saying. One, capital intensive. Two, attitude. Because everything has to do with human. And human. And attitude. Move away. He said, I don't want to move. Okay, move away. Go and stay there. I say, okay. When the government official have gone, they you know, come You know, you know, the, the, the so, question a lot of people raise about moving away is the fact that before they came there in the first instance, why were they not warned? Or why were they not stopped? Uh, you know, we have our in terms early, of early, urban planning. Early warning system. And we have it in all these areas across the country. When uh, the water is, the level is getting higher and there is going to be likely, did that? No, you didn't um, quite get me, uh, Pastor okay. Bejide. What I'm trying to say is that, say, for example, you talked about the Trade Moor Estate and you yes. said, well, it's a flood plain. A lot of people would question why that place was actually um, utilized for that purpose of an estate if it's a flood plain in the first place. So who approved that yes, land? Yes, that, that's the problem of uh, urban planning and also, but now they have approved it. People are built on it. This is a reality on ground. But is that the end? No. We can relocate the people. We can move the people. But if they don't want, of course, you see, like uh, the FC minister, and we if he comes now tomorrow and says, okay, we are going to demolish this, this place, people will come to, to your station and say they are protesting, they are doing this, the governor is bad, and this is, uh, you know that, you know that. And yeah, because so, the landlord doesn't that, want to become a tenant. That wouldn't matter. <laughs> that wouldn't matter exactly. because what government... Do we do? Government does not uh, base its actions on, the on, the dis uh, on what pleases a few. Yes. It is on the basis of the common good. What will do the maximum amount of people, the maximum amount of good. Yes. So it wouldn't matter if they protest to it, if a few I, people protest Yes, protest I agree with you. That's why I don't want to go there, but I will touch on it a little because uh, in an, on a national scale and another sector, moving away a little bit from where water, we know what is happening in Nigeria. Uh, when over time, politically, about uh, 16 years before, after the Obasanjo regime, people say, okay, remove subsidy, remove subsidy. It's, it's, it's a scam. Is this, this. And of course, government came, they pledged that they will remove subsidy. And they, they voted them. They came into power. They never removed subsidy. Then Buhari also came, say, on that platform, pledge, I will, will remove subsidy. This, uh, civil society say, okay. And it came, it didn't remove then our present uh, president came, Tinubu, he said, I will remove subsidy. And they gonna, he came to power now. First day, he said, subsidy is gone. Then we know what, where we are today. They are saying, no, this is this again. Okay, she will say, bring it down, bring it back. So these are things we are talking about. There will be tough time and tough decision to make. We have to accept it and pass through it. It's not easy to, be, you know, to go through surgery. The flooding issue in Nigeria is not something that you have to use medicine and tablet for. It's a it surgical operation eh, to be faced squarely. And we feel pain. Well, yes, it's always darkest before dawn. That's what Nigerians have to know. Yeah, but you said the fear about Nigerians, of Nigerians about surgeries, if you do not have the right equipment and all that you require, uh, trained personnel to do the surgery, it may result to death. So what's the guarantee we'll survive at the end of the day? Oh, China have passed through this. <laughs> America also have passed through all these things, and now they're out of it. Ghana must go. I told people, what is Ghana must go? That um, bag is not that Ghana must go by the manufacturer. It's because that's the bag that was used, eh? Eh? About 25 years ago, when uh, Ghana flooded, Ni Ghanaians flooded Nigeria, and the government have to make, of Shagari have to make that all Ghanaians leave the country. And that's the bag they use. And that's how people name it Ghana must go. Eh? Now, Ghana is good now. Nigerians are going there. Let Nigeria pass through this phase also. We come out of it better. All right. Thank you, Pastor Bejide. Let's uh, talk about um, relief. Uh, and that will bring me to. Uh, uh, Idris Abubakar Mohammed. We, much as we would want to see a situation where flooding is mitigated, well, it's become the sing song in Nigeria. Every year we must talk about it. Now that you have noted that 28 states are already impacted by flooding, what has been Neymar's response in all of this? Thank you very much, sir. Um, you see, not long ago, Mr. President released 42,000 metric tons of assorted uh, grains from our strategic uh, Reserve. uh, reserves. I think one of 
very good decisions that uh, give succor to the people. I was just having a conversation with the Honorable Commissioner before we came here. Just uh, Friday last week, the name handed over 51 trucks of assorted food items to the government of uh, Jigawa State. Uh, and it, it coincided with this escalation of the flood disaster. Uh, just yesterday, before I left the office, our head of territorial office in Kano sent a report that uh, there's a need to send additional uh, search and rescue officers from Kano territorial office to Jigawa State. Uh, there's a need to deploy mobile water purification equipment to some of these states that are experiencing floods. These are machines that uh, you can take raw water anywhere. It's, it's like a water works on wheels. So anywhere we have uh, uh, people that are affected by disaster, either they are living in camps or they are living among host communities or sources of drinking water are contaminated, we deploy such machines. I personally have uh, worked in several states of Nigeria providing water. Uh, there was a time, uh, 2018, I was in Zungeru for three months. I was given the whole of Zungeru potable water. So the Director General uh, Nema, Zubaida Umar, granted approval. We are moving these machines to Jigawa State and several other states. You see, for now, the northern states are experiencing this uh, escalated flood incidences. Niger Republic is experiencing the same. The floods are swinging back to central states, to southern states. So that's the more reason why uh, we, we, we need to do, we need to do uh, a lot of uh, emergency stockpiling. NEMA is doing that, of course, uh, within our limited resources. And uh, we're expecting state governments to do the same thing, the emergency stockpiling of food items, no food items, temporary shelter for immediate deployment. How does uh, NEMA distribute relief materials? Uh, we, we work hand uh, our, our point of entry to every city is the state emergency management agency. We work with the state emergency management agencies. We conduct damage and loss assessments uh, if there is a disaster incident, which is uh, beyond the capacity of the local it's government possible. and the states. Like I said, disaster management architecture is based on the federal structure of Nigeria. And, and NEMA will always say that every disaster incident happens in a particular community, in a particular local government, and in a particular state. So the first responders should be in that very community. You don't expect somebody from a state capital or from Abuja to go and conduct search and rescue. In case, uh, but does NEMA monitor? Because there are reports that the relief materials sometimes uh, do not really get to those who need them. Uh, I, I, I tell you, uh, for us at NEMA, the mantra is that all our operations were guided by humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and, and operational independence, the humanitarian principles. Yet, you cannot do, go to a, a state and a local government and micromanage their affairs. They know the communities better than you do. They know the people better than you do. Who is the best person you work with than the elected state government officials, the elected local government but, officials? But with reports of people not getting, those who need the relief, not getting the relief materials, and the fact that there are also reports that some of these relief materials that should be free are sold, what has NEMA done? I don't know whether those relief materials are for NEMA or, or for SEMA or for local emergency management committee, but honestly, on a serious note, I want to assure you that uh, our operations are very credible. When we are deploying uh, relief interventions, we work with the security agencies. We don't just go as NEMA alone. We even need our personal security anyway. So we go with the police, we go with the civil defense, we, then we go with the Red Cross. The state same as the local emergency management, management agency uh, added to, like this grant distribution we did, we included the community leaders, the religious leaders, the teachers, uh, the association of uh, national union of teachers, the labor. So I don't know how under this, even the NUJ, they are here. I, I, can, I have a document here that, ah, uh, that says, excuse me, I, can, I think I can read it. 
uh, membership of the committee includes chairman of the local government council, state emergency management agency, traditional rulers, department of state services, the Nigeria police force, the Nigeria security and civil defense, faith-based organizations, uh, that's JNI and CAN, national union of local government employees, Nigeria Red Cross, women associations, persons with disabilities, youth that, associations. That, that's quite comprehensive. So, so, so under this praying eyes, I wonder how you can divert really materials. Uh, anyway, I, I think it's something <laughs> we'll talk more about in the course of the program, uh, but that will be after we go on this break. Uh, please stay with us. Did you know that President Bola Tinubu has approved the suspension of import duties and tariffs on rice, maize and other essential food items for the next five months? The President has also approved the suspension of import duties on pharmaceutical raw materials and equipment. This will help bring down the prices of food and drugs across the country. All hands are on deck to ensure that things get better for all Nigerians. This is the renewed hope. Meet lovebirds Jayola and Adama Davis. Their dream of living together as man and wife has finally been fulfilled. The latest couple in town, Yay! Mr. and Mrs. Jaya Davis! <laughs> but an invasion by their troublesome families was not a scenario they bargained for. Her mother moves in, his mother shows up with his little niece. Then, her younger sister joins the scramble. You want to? You want to stay? Married life suddenly becomes very complicated even before it started. Follow their story on this channel as they confront every challenge as it comes. Family forever. The story of our lives. The Council of Our Fathers. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. We must all join hands to work hard so that we build a country for our grandchildren. My hope is that we develop this nation where every citizen is given his due right, there is a transparency, honesty, and integrity. Put the interests of this country first, first and foremost, interests of Nigeria, is being one nation, one people. The need, if I mean, to, uh, uh, to put things right, things that have gone wrong before, uh, 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 to try and, uh, you know, and, and put right, uh, you know, for, this, uh, for, the, for the love of country. Thank you for staying with us on Good Morning Nigeria, where we've been discussing the challenges of flooding and how to mitigate uh, them. But let me stay with you, um, uh, Special Assistant to the Director General of NEMA. I would like to find out what is the scope, typically, of NEMA's intervention when there is um, you know, a disaster. Now we are dealing with, we are talking flooding particularly. What's the scope of NEMA's intervention as per your mandate? Yeah, um, our interventions are, are demand-driven. And uh, like I said, uh, the National Emergency Management Agency NEMA at the federal government level, the state emergency management agency at the state level, and the local emergency management committees. Uh, are responsible for working together with other partners. You see, a lot of people add value to these uh, relief operations we are doing. For us, if there is a disaster in a particular community, we work together, we work together with uh, the official of the State Emergency Management Agency. We have six zonal offices 
for name I, uh, in, in the six uh, geopolitical zones of Nigeria. And uh, we have about 18 operations offices. We have two territorial offices in Lagos and Kano uh, in consideration of the, of the size of the cities. And of course, a lot of uh, risks uh, that do exist. So we do damage and loss assessment. Then we send to our headquarters. Then we, we make uh, recommendations for, for, for relief interventions. We do that. And our intervention starts not only giving people food, such and rescue. Because it's only when somebody is alive that he can eat the rice and beans. We work with the military disaster response units. In every military formation, there is a disaster response unit. So if there, if there is a, a disaster event, we activate them. We have uh, an MOU with the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense. We have MOU with the Nigeria Police. Because every disaster scene is a potential crime scene. And uh, you need to do crowd control. It's not only floods. We are dealing with several other issues. I recall that uh, up to now, we have the residuals of Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast region. We have banditry in several states of Nigeria. So, so, so for us, it's a cocktail of events. Already we have a lot of people that were given relief materials to take care of them. In, in Benue State, there are a lot of... What is the maximum level of intervention that Neymar can undertake? Uh, uh, in, you mean in, in terms of numbers? No. When capacity of states, same as are overwhelmed, yeah. we, 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 we only spot, but of course within limitation of our resources. Okay. Like I said, we distributed food items to every state of the federation, the 42,000 metric tons approved by Mr. President. And uh, of course, uh, based on our resources availability, we do emergency stockpiling in our warehouses so that easily we can deploy temporary shelter, medicals, like in, by next week, I'm sure, we are, we are deploying uh, additional support to Jigawa State medicals, the water equipment that I mentioned. And in every state, if there is an incidence like this, that is the architecture we follow. We complement the efforts of the local governments and the state governments. We work together. Since you store uh, you know, some uh, certain uh, things, uh, like you said, medicals under arrest, how does NEMA check validity? Uh, what, what's the uh, guarantee that uh, you know, as at the time you're distributing such uh, materials are still valid? Uh, you, you mean you mean the uh, expiry yes, dates and what? Yes. No, no. We we see we we always stockpile things that are that have a, a very long sh uh, shelf life. Shelf life. Fantastic. Thank like, you. Like, like the grains we are talking about, mm. like like blankets, temporary shelter. But issues like for core medicine, that is not our purview. But you see, the Minister of Health is the sector lead. If there is a disaster incident. All right. So. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Idris Abaka Mohamed. We'll get back to you. I I'd like to get to the Commissioner for Environment, Jigawa State, now, Dr. Nora Ibrahim. Of course, we've praised you at the beginning of this program. Jigawa State is doing so much, and you have told us what you're doing. What you're doing. But there's a report that this year, uh, so far, 30 people have died as a result of flood. Uh, 800, 8,000 have been displaced, over 8,000. Uh, 9,379 hectares of land have been submerged. Yes, uh, so we agreed that Jigawa State is, you know, doing so much. But what more do you think Jigawa State can, uh, do you think Jigawa State should do, you know, to prevent, uh, you know, this kind of occurrence, like what's happening this year? Um, I think that before I delve into the question, I, I don't know where the statistic is coming. Because, yeah, because this loss of lives, I, I, I can agree with that. But... So far, I ha we have not recorded a single loss of life in this year. We haven't in Jigawa State. Uh, as you rightly said, let me uh, go back to the question. I think um, uh, this year, based on the uh, NISA, NIMED, and also the NEMA, you know, uh, a kind of uh, predictions. So the state ensured that 
we even went for supplementary budget to ensure that we have enough as far as stockpiling the store of uh, uh, SEMA, food and non-food items, building materials and what have you. So we have enough as far as that is concerned. And NEMA is coming up with other support of, uh, with food, as he rightly said, about 51 trucks. I think um, the SEMA is under special duties ministry, okay. yes, in Jigawa State. So they are doing great in terms of support to flood victims and all emergency issues, not only flood, other emergency stuff. So Wujigawa is ever ready, based on the predictions given, to respond adequately and sufficiently. To respond or to attempt to mitigate. You know, it all the, it's, it's, it's the nomenclature used. Because that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. That's the idea behind yeah, yeah. the prediction, right? Yeah, exactly. So, as I said, it's a nomenclature. Whatever you want to put it, or the, the, it depends on how you want to look at it. So, to ensure that we have this, we have adequate. And that's why, as soon as we have issues, or as soon as we have early warning sign that this uh, particular community is will be going to be overtaken by flood, you'll find all the stuff there. The SEMA, environment, Ministry of Works, health, you know, doing the needful, as far as that is concerned. So in Jigawa, it's not like it is happening now, you have to go and search for approval to get this, this and done. We already have all these materials, as I said, food and non-food items, as far as SEMA is concerned. <laughs> and what will surprise you is that, Jig uh, as far as Ministry of Environment is concerned, this year, by April, we've exhausted the budget of 2000, uh, uh, 2024. So we have to go also for yes. supplementary. Not only we have increased budget appropriation, but 100% release. And uh, I think this is something that uh, I think the government need to be commended for. And as you rightly said, we have to thank Almighty. At least this year, we don't have issues of river and flooding. What we have is that flooding in communities that are upland. So the question now is, what happens? So when you go down, you will understand that a lot of human activities negative human activities. For example, the government will spend so much money building gutters. But surprisingly, people will be coming and be dumping waste inside the gutters. And block it. And block it. And then they will send us a uh, picture, we are flooded. Uh, you, you will see gutters and everything. So, so that gives a sense that there needs to be awareness yes, yes. on the part on the of part, the state government. Yes, there that's, the, that's what the awareness. state government is doing. And that's why we are collaborating with the media. Okay. Because it's, you are, you are in very important stakeholders in this. Enlightenment, public enlightenment. That's what we've been doing. That's what we're doing. Right. Telling people the negative impact of their actions. Indeed. Indeed. And um, at least we're gaining on that ground. You started, you know, it's something that will take long, but we're on it. Okay. Another thing I, I need to say, when you talk about Ibrahim flooding, we only talk of one aspect. What do we do? as a permanent measure. The, His Excellency, when he came in, he employed consultants, they are working. He went to the World Bank through the Acrisal project to ensure that Jigawa is saved from river and flooding. So they are coming up with the uh, design and the World Bank through Acrisal project is supporting that uh, uh, process. All right, so, uh, Dr. Nur Ibrahim, I uh, yes. just uh, quickly want to read this report to you. Um, Jigawa State Governor Umar mm. Namadi, uh, yeah. this was two days ago, okay. actually said that over 40,000 people have been affected by flood and destroyed uh, several farm products in the state. Uh, the governor also disclosed while receiving the House of Reps Committee on Ecological Fund uh, during a courtesy visit uh, to the governor in Dutsi that the disaster has ravaged 14 local government areas. Namadi explained that according to the reports in the government's disposal, 28 people as a result of flood-related incidents have died. So that's like where I got my statistics from when I said uh, this is the state at this moment. Yeah. And what more needs to be done? 
Okay. Uh, That's not to discredit the effort no, no, being no, no, put no, no, by the no, state no, government no, so far. No, no, no. But we're just saying that despite the measures, mm. um, you know, it's still ravaging uh, people of that state. It means that more or, you know, maybe a different measure needs to be taken to deal uh, with And, the and that's what we're seeing now. We're talking about now public awareness. We're talking, as rightly said, we are now engaging the urban and regional planning to ensure that they don't just allocate, they don't give approvals for, you know, uh, housing anywhere like in flood prone, uh, uh, flood prone areas, like maybe reclaim borough pits, because that's what's happening. You have a borough pit inside the town, and people will just start dumping, uh, you know, uh, waste. They will reclaim it, and they will build houses there. What will happen? And this one serves as a natural, you know, uh, a, you know, a balance system for all these runoffs and water. So they, they drain in there. So what what will happen? If they, the, this, 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 this will be flooded. This is exactly what happens in Balangu, in one of the uh, communities in Jigawa State. Because the, the, the borough pit has been reclaimed, has been filled up. So the water doesn't have anywhere to go. So what the state government is doing now is to deploy a lot of machines who have to be pumping out the water, excess water, outside. So this is, these are the things that we're doing. And the governor realized again now, that there is need for any project in the state, it has to, it has to come with EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment. I think this is very, very key and it's very important because most of the things, uh, when he came, he realized that there are no EIAs. So he called me and said there is need for us to come up with a very excellent EIA for any project because, you, for example, the state government want to put up township roads. The houses are already built. What do they do? They fill up, they do the road. Now they are, the road is above, you know, the, the houses. What happens? The water will not uh, be drained. It will be going inside the houses. So what we are trying to do now, after the year, we want to make sure that we excavate and then we filled with the borrowed, the, oh, the right borrowed right. materials. And this is a part of the effort the government it's is okay. again doing. I, I, I do hope that, because the idea is so that people don't die, so yeah. that uh, we don't, uh, there is no loss of property, no loss of lives, that uh, we take more steps to preempt rather than respond. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's the whole idea. Yeah. But let me get to Pastor Bejide. Uh, I just wanted to find out the impact of climate change on Nigeria's flooding crisis and um, you know how Nigeria can adapt to this situation. Okay. The impact of climate change to flooding has been in Nigeria and all over the world devastating. That's why I say that uh, the whole world, are they are taking the impact of uh, climate change very serious. Hmm. Very soon, uh, less than a month or so, there will be global meeting again on environment summit and uh, with the yes with the issue of uh, climate change but back home now it came to nigeria because everything boils down with each other's country in nigeria what i want to say also here I, when we started she also tried to note that we have been saying that is personally for me and for most people have been concerned and then uh, Wondering why is such? Say prevention is better than cure. The interplay, the sectoral agency interplay is that NIMET deals with the environment and bring it down to NICER. NICER, the information we translate it into what? Into flood forecasting and things like that and uh, prevention, uh, preventive measures. Then NEMA comes in to respond then okay if the end is to mitigate i believe strongly that emphasis should have been placed on prevention mm -hmm. prevention that is where the issue and that's what she raised at the beginning and uh, it will be worth noting that the nigeria as a nation eh, seems not to pay Emphasis to that, although they do say prevention is better than cure, but NICER prevents. 
But the institution that prevents, if it's not well funded, then what are we saying? And the institution that is in our, uh, that cures is well funded. Like I said. So NISA is not well funded? Yes. What I'm saying here is that, of course, the money given to NEMA judiciously, I follow them, we are partners. Yes, not even enough still to do it. But if such money also, or half of such money have been channeled eh, to an organ that prevents, like now, according to WMO standard, that is World Meteorological Organization, a nation should have about 430 met uh, hydrometric stations to measure. NISA have less than 100. Less than 100. When we come to funding, I think NEMA is in excess of tens of billions. Where NISA is not even up to half a billion. So you can understand this uh, disparity and things like that. And I also understand, and that's why we are doing all this advocacy in National Assembly, the new DG now, architect Umaru Ibrahim Mohammed, engaging the uh, National Assembly, the lawmakers and the uh, executives also to look at the importance uh, NISA plays so that we can increase the funding of NISA. So this has been a major issue, critical. NEMA works of, uh, with our prediction. The state governor, government also work on our prediction. Uh, and if we are not well funded, we, uh, we don't give accurate predictions, how, where do we start? So it's clear to see why we are as a yes. nation reactive. Mm. Yes. Well, yes. Well, maybe, maybe because they expect NISA to also pray. Um, in in, <laughs> and, and, also and, uh, pray, pray in so, you know you know the, the you've told uh -huh. us what you do uh you said the notation instrumentation <laughs> whatever sensitization and that you are a pastor so maybe you should pray instead of asking for more money exactly <laughs> that is the national you know everybody say nigerian praise whether in, 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 in the muslim faith christian faith exactly but we also know that faith without well, works I, I, I mean, your, your, your message is received Let, let's take the last uh, couple of minutes <laughs> to get a closer remark. Uh, uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Uh, you see, uh, on a serious note, disaster management is everybody's business. Actually. And, and uh, it behoves on the media to support all of us to build well-informed and resilient Nigerian citizens. We must take this issue of disaster management very serious. Uh, we must respect the environment. I'll give you an example. If uh, FCT Water Board for one day is having some maintenance issues, I see my neighbors, they dispatch their, the women, the children carrying water on their mm. heads. It's because even at the household level, somebody has not envisaged that situations like this can happen. And uh, he doesn't have a container to that store. can sustain him for the next 24 hours to have portable water in his house. That is our attitude. Uh, thank God, NEMA is partnering with six federal universities in six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. And uh, they're offering courses, certificate courses, master's degree, PhD in disaster management and development studies. Mm. And think, uh, uh, I think uh, and those centers have now uh, gradually uh, they are becoming re repositories of, of well-informed people that can work in the state emergency management agencies, the NEMA and several other organizations. So it behaves of, on, on us. I've seen video clips ravaging flood waters, somebody in, in a bike. Some, just some few years ago, at that the local Goma actually is talking there. about. <laughs> somebody was late, he's driving to the airport. People were stopping him because of the floods. Mm. He told the driver to drive in. <laughs> At the end of the day, he lost his life. Hmm. Yeah. The driver opened the door and escaped. So, so it behoves behelp, on all of yeah, us. So would you now say uh, getting flood insurance would be a way to go going forward? Uh, you know, for we, we, we promote uh, risk transfer because certain disasters are avoidable. Certain disasters are transferable through insurance. Uh, in fact, we, 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 we are... We are planning to host a seminar on, on market fires because of the incessant uh, fire mm -hmm. outbreaks in our markets. Mm -hmm. So that we, we did a pilot program some years ago in Kaduna, 
in the Shigumi market, where the state government ensured the entire market structure, and then uh, traders are to ensure their wares. As a form of risk transfer, mm. I think we have to build on that. All right. Even the culture of, of, of insurance in, in Nigeria is very weak. Some people just go for the third party uh, uh, insurance yes. for their vehicles, which is very compulsory. Mm. So the media must help us to build that well informed, that's what we that well informed <laughs> and, 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 and resilient uh, yeah, Nigerians. That's what we are doing. We are helping you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But thank you very much, uh, Idris Abubakar Mohammed, uh, Special Assistant to the Director General, National Emergency Management Agency. Uh, thank you for your time and your insights. And of course, we hope that your agency will continue to do the needful. Uh, we also appreciate Dr. Uh, Noura Ibrahim, Commissioner for Environment, uh, Jigawa State. Thank you so much, and we hope that you sustain the effort and uh, save more people of that state. Uh, Pastor Femi Bejide, Director of Operational uh, Hydrology, Hydrological, Nigeria Hydrological Services uh, Agency, NISA. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank and you. you need to add praying to your uh, <laughs> <laughs> list. There's no P in this. I, 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 think what is, I think there's only one thing that's missing. We have not spoken about the community participation. Because it's not government and government all the time. Yes. You know, Indeed. people need to be involved. That's community need to participate. That's why speak. awareness is important. Important. Yes. 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 Create awareness. Yes. And then the people yeah. are carried along. Yes. Well. All right, so that's a uh, good morning, Nigeria, uh, this Friday. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Henry John. Enjoy your weekend. And I'm Victor as well. Say happy weekend.